and welcome to the second part of the Well ID documentation procedure. In this section, we will focus on technical and hydrogeological uh, data documentation procedure. This data consolidates all the information that are gathered during well construction and cannot be retrieved at any later stage. Let us just recall the different steps that were used in part one because the same procedures will be used in parts two and three. The first step is to tick the boxes where the data is available in the borehole completion reports. The second step is just to input that data in the dedicated column. In the second part, uh, with well construction information, there is some specific data that cannot be inputted in the checklist and that will have to be uh, introduced in, uh, in a specific spreadsheet that we will look at next. This spreadsheet is easy to use and we will go through it together. Now let us take our, the same example as in part one and look at the data and input it in the checklist. The first step is to see what data is available and what is not. In this updated version, you can select from a drop-down list uh, yes or no, yes in case the data exists, and no if it is nowhere to be found. Once you have done that, the second step is to input the data. As you can see here, there are three different colors uh, for the, the input cells. If the cell is white, that means that you can input static data just manually. In case the cell is in light blue, you use the drop-down list uh, available on this cell, go in the report, see uh, what information there is, uh, find the, the adequate answer in the drop-down list and input it. The final cells are the dark blue cells. Those are for specific data only and cannot be inputted in the checklist. They will have to be inputted in the specific spreadsheet that we will look at now. What you see here is a specific spreadsheet for data that could not be inputted in the checklist. You can see already in the white cells that data from the checklist has been transferred automatically. What you will need to do now is to uh, put data in the yellow cells manually and in the blue cells using the scroll down menu. Like the checklist approach, this is pretty straightforward and you can input systematically your well construction data in there. We start with the drilling diameters. What we have to do is to go back to the borer completion report and find out the relative information. So we will uh, look at the correspondent uh, data. And as you can see from the borer completion report, in our case, the whole diameter is in millimeters. Why? In this uh, spreadsheet, we will need uh, to record uh, the diameters in inches. So make sure that you convert the coordinates into inches. We will do exactly the same for the casing characteristics. So from the borer completion report, we will um, define uh, what are the characteristics of the casings uh, from the different uh, depths of the well. <coughs> And we will input manually in the yellow cells uh, uh, the correspondent um, depth and diameter. And then from the drop-down menu, um, we, will, uh, we will choose uh, what's uh, the correspondent uh, casing type, the correspondent screen type, the material, and finally the slot size. And we will continue for the whole depth of the borehole. Of course, if there are information that are not available in the borer completion report, we will need to choose the item from the drop-down menu. And uh, of course, in the plain uh, casing, uh, there will be no screen type, so it will we'll have to automatically select the item. We will follow the same procedure for the annular space filling. So inputting manually from the borer completion report, uh, uh, the characteristics in the yellow cells and from the drop-down menu in the blue cells. For the lithology and hydrostratigraphy, hydrostrat we will uh, uh, again look into the borer completion report. We will uh, add uh, manually in the yellow cells, then in the lithology we will select from the drop-down menu and then in the lithological description we will add the details of the lithological uh, characteristics and then in the groundwater occurrence uh, we can select from dry, iPhone and aquifer. 
we will go uh, down uh, through all out the, the borehole and in case uh, there are similar lithologies we can uh, bound them into uh, one single layer and uh, it is very important to, to define uh, where there is a water strike so to, to write down where the aquifer where the, the, the aquifer is and uh, in, in case there is no information about groundwater but uh, there is uh, an aquifer on top you just choose hyphen. The same procedure will be followed for the backfilling and sanitary seal from the borer completion report. We will just report the same information into the spreadsheet. So the outcome of um, part two is the completed uh, spreadsheet, as you can see here, for all the well construction data, including all the technical and the lithological uh, information. Uh, some, of the in, uh, some of this data, in particular the casing characteristics and the pump position, are subsequently used in part 3 in order to calculate aquifer properties but also characteristic well yields. In the bottom right you can see the red box indicating the driller's yield. The driller's yield, or sometimes it's also called the driller's estimate, is obtained during well development. Now, in the part three, this yield will also be compared to the safe yield that we will calculate using the data from the step drawdown test. A second outcome of uh, this uh, part two is the visual representation of all the technical and lithological information within a borehole log that is automatically filled in. In this case, for instance, if we uh, zoom in a little bit, we can, for instance, see that the pump is positioned within a screen section. Now, this is a big problem. A pump should never be uh, located in a, in a screen section. So there will be automatically an error message appearing in the top of this borehole uh, log. Now, see, such a visual representation can, of course, uh, be very helpful in order to quickly remediate uh, to such technical problems. So now that we've filled in this, uh, gone through this example together, go ahead and try it yourself. You may find that it is challenging for the first uh, report that you, that you will try to introduce into this uh, spreadsheet, but you will see that you quickly get into the routine. Now, you will also see if, in your case, there are systematically the same data that are missing, which is then an indication that you may have to look into contractual issues.